Hey guys, it's Ted and I'm here with Brian and Brian's one of my clients and um, we wanted to have a quick chat today on our little podcast video YouTube channel show thing that we, I do from time to time because um, folks always ask like what's it like for folks that are you know, in certain kinds of situations. And so I like to bring on guys who've been in whatever situation you may be in. And some people are bigger companies and smaller companies and stuff like that. So, um, Brian's a cool dude. He, um, was telling me that his business before when he first started, it was just kind of a little bit of everything kind of, he described it as wild, wild west. He's running around and, uh, doing some commercial and some residential and some construction, and a little bit of everything, whatever brought in a dollar. And um, after we started working together, a few things cool happened. Like, um, I think you said, would you say it was like 45% up so far in a couple months? Yes, yeah, sir. Well, 45% year to date as to compare right. it to last year's uh, end of year sales. Yeah. So, so why don't we just um, start with like, where were you um, or just kind of introduce yourself, kind of tell everybody what, about your business and which, where you're at and what's going on. You know. Well, my name is Brian. I'm out, out of Maryland. Uh, I have a small business here uh, growing quick, quickly. Um, started the business part-time uh, three years ago. Ted and I uh, met uh, via Facebook and uh, we had a conversation. At the time, I was still full-time with my current employer and I was doing uh, commercial building automation at the time and uh, decided I wanted to start a, a small part-time uh, gig and see, see where it went. So, um, but we didn't really work together at that time. We yeah, just no, we we had together. a chat for a little while, for like so an hour. We had a chat, yep. And, um, you know, Ted said something very, that still sticks with me to this day. And, you know, I've recently brought it up to somebody else, another young guy. You know, I was in a position where, you know, I had one foot on the boat, one foot on the dock. Um, I was playing it safe by keeping my job uh, with my full-time employer, but um, was a little nervous to take the leap of faith onto the boat. And, uh you know, I, I constantly thought about, you know, that one line he said about, you know, you're staying where it's safe. You know, do you want to jump on the boat or do you want to, do you want to stay on the dock where it's nice and safe? And, you know, he put it to me that it was, it was my decision to make. And it was. Well, if you stand there, you stand there too long like that, you get wet. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the boat starts to drift away. I mean, right. it's going to take you. <laughs> and you can't do both, right? Yeah. So, um, so I went, I went at it for about a year part-time with it. Uh, business started to develop. Uh, my name started to get out there. And it just got to a point where I was uh, frustrated where I was at working for corporate America and uh, just didn't want to do it anymore. And my employer at the time was kind of putting some pressure on me. And uh, I felt good about it. Um, so in March of 2018, I decided to take the leap and, and go out on my own. Right. And so I quit and uh, it was just me running, working, doing everything, long hours, long days. That's for sure. Right. And uh, haven't, haven't had nothing but growth since then. Right. So what, what was the struggle that you found once you did that? For me, it was understanding the business side of it because at the end of the day, I am a tech. Um, so I didn't, I never really had exposure. I, I did commercial residential building automation. So I had a ton of field experience. You know, I've been in the field for almost 19 years now. Yeah. Um, so the technical side was easy for me. Um, sales side wasn't bad for me cause I'm uh, an extrovert. I like talking to people. I like meeting people. And, uh, generally I can find some kind of commonality between myself and people. Um, so the sales side wasn't hard, but understanding business numbers and stuff like that was, I was completely clueless. You know, when I first started, I didn't even know what a PNL was. So I had to figure all of this out, you know, on my own time and on my own dollar. Right. Right. So, I mean, there's obviously a growing pain that happens there by yourself. No more employer. The buck stops here. Yeah. And you went along like that for well over a year before we talked again. Yeah, it was about a, it was right about the year mark that um, uh, you and I reconnected and uh, I decided it was time. You know, I, I did I did uh, I did decent for being, you know, a solo business. I had one part time guy who was just a flat uh, just paid on a flat rate uh, uh situation when, when he could help out. But I mean, I was doing change outs by myself and it, it, it was, it was tough. 
It was I tough. think a lot of us have done that. I mean, I remember doing change out by myself whack when I first started, like, like, like everybody else, I started by myself with a truck and a few hundred dollars and the bag of tools and, yeah. you know, and that too. So, uh, been there, done that. So, you know, yeah, it's tough. It's hard on you. And then you come home after, you know, after a change out by yourself, that's not, not a whole lot of fun. Yeah, you've had, you've had a long after that, and then, <laughs> yeah. then you got to come home and do the book side of things and, and right. get out estimates for other stuff. So, you end up working 16, 18 hours a day. It takes a toll on you. Yeah. Well, you can't do that every day for very long anyway. You know? No, no, it'll, it'll wear you down quick. That's for sure. Right. Yep. And that, and, and the problem is, um, did you try to, do, what were you trying to do to grow at that point? Honestly, I wasn't really doing anything necessarily. Uh, I was blessed in that, um, you know, I had a lot of work coming in by referrals and I didn't really have time to grow because I was too busy running around putting out fires and doing the actual field work and right. keeping, keeping the book straight. You know, at, at, at a point in between there, I ended up hiring a bookkeeper. She's an independent contractor. She's not a full-time employee, but that took some brunt off of me. And I think that was, you know, not too long before you and I had connected, I had made that decision. You know, I just yep. wasn't keeping up anymore. Yep. So, I mean, you obviously ended up on a little journey of discovery there for a few weeks where you were thinking, I need some help. And I'm going to figure out where to get it. And yeah. so why don't you, uh, what did you look at? I mean, I know obviously we connected, but I, I think you said you looked at some other things too or whatever. And, you know, what, what else did you try? Yeah, no, I mean, I had looked at some other uh, um, business coaching programs and stuff like that. I just didn't feel like they were right for me. Um, you know, we were coming in, we're getting ready to come into our busy season and I thought it's early enough now that if I can jump on with somebody, maybe I can get some good structure together going into summer and be able to do better this year than I did last year and maybe not lose my sanity in the process. Yep. I've had a couple, a couple of conversations recently with a few folks. And one of the things that I realized is that when you're looking at coaching programs or whatever, if you're the coachee on your end, at some point, you're going to have to drink somebody's Kool-Aid. Right. Or it ain't going to work. <laughs> yeah. You got to find the guy who it's almost like religion. You want to be one of the Christian religions. That's cool. But you have to decide are you going to be a Southern Baptist or a Catholic or a Lutheran or whatever the hell it's going to be. Pick one and then do it their way. Right. right. Cause right. otherwise you're going to be floundering around in here going, I'm not really all in and I don't really believe it and I don't really try that hard. So it's, it's good. I think to have a couple of conversations and decide that that's the one for me, for whatever your reasons are. Right. Yeah. So the, the question is, what were your reasons? Uh, you know, again, we had had a conversation previously. Um, you know, I felt comfortable with you. I felt confident that, uh, you know, you were going to help me. And, um, you know, I, 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 I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was a little on the fence in the beginning. Um, with hiring any coaching program, you know, I, I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know, um, you know, what the outcome was going to be. So you and I had had, I think two or three conversations before I finally actually committed to the program. Um, but during those conversations, you know, I liked a lot of the things you had to say yep. and I felt like you were going to be good for my business, my business model, which I want to build a quality centered business, not a price business. You know, I don't want to be, taking every low dollar, selling 14 to see equipment all day long. That's not the market I want to be in. I want to be in the mid to higher end market. And I felt like you were going to help me grow myself to get in that, in that path. Right. Right. Cool. So, I mean, so you enrolled in there and obviously I remember these conversations really well, actually. I remember. I think they you were, were like at 1130 at night. <laughs> you were like the reluctant. I had to kind of drag you kicking and screaming across the finish line <laughs> to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, yeah. and we actually, I actually have a, a term for this. We call this the skeptical try. <laughs> so, um, and it's, it's the thing that, you know, and by the way, this is not uncommon. It happens, you know, quite often where it's like, you want me to do what? I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's almost like, you know, like I taught my daughter, she's five. I taught her last summer when she was four, how to ride her bike without training wheels. And at some point they look at you like you're crazy. Like, you want me to ride the bike without what? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to fall over. Yeah, I know you're going to fall over, but you have to do it or you're not going to get any progress here. So, you know, yeah. if you're the dad running behind the bike with the 
with the hand on the seat and letting go, you know, that's sort of what being a coach is like, is you're kind of like, you know, I got to get you guys to try something on your own and realize, oh crap, I can do this. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. that skeptical try is always an interesting thing. So it was a good question. Um, what was the first thing that, that I told you to do where you did it and went, holy crap, that result worked out better than I thought. <laughs> Well, it was definitely building a flat rate book and uh, getting my pricing right. Uh, you know, I increased my prices uh, pretty drastically. And again, uh, I was skeptical, you know. We had a lot of conversations. <laughs> we, did. We, we did. And I'm looking at these numbers and I'm like, mm, this is going to be a tough sale. And, uh, you know, some were. Some were, I'm not going to lie. You know, I had some people that, you know, just didn't want to do it but but you didn't lose all your customers or anything like everybody says no you. absolutely not no i mean my numbers uh, definitely definitely show that and you know the way i look at it is now you know i'm getting more of the customers that i want to be my customers right and on top of it i'm making more money and doing less work so it's kind of a no-brainer <laughs> <laughs> right exactly you know? i mean here's the funny part right because as service techs we have this this kind of lizard brain that thinks what i want to do is work a lot because when you're a service tech working for someone else the way you make bank is go work overtime because you make a lot of money sure when you work a 60 hour week, you just have a, a, a 20 year in your case experience of 20 years, man. Every time I worked overtime, we made a lot of big paychecks. So then when you become an owner, suddenly you think I want to close all the jobs. I want to get everybody. I want to have all the customers. And I just really believe the name of the game isn't to close all the jobs. The close, the name of the game is to close the jobs that are closable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At, under my terms, not yeah. somebody else's, you know? So this is a really interesting thing. So what was the, what was the result that you got? You just kind of alluded to it quickly. Let's get a little more detail. The result you got from just the price change and stuff, cause that happened really quick. That was like a week or two, right? I mean, yeah, it didn't, yeah, it, it, didn't it didn't take long. And uh, like within a week or two, you're like, I remember you calling me up going, holy crap, I sold this thing. It was way more expensive. And I, yeah, I, get, to keep, I, mean, I, I it, get to keep the money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, we're not talking like I added a couple hundred dollars onto these jobs. We're talking thousands of dollars. Right. You know, but I really, I broke down all my numbers, you know, and you helped me do that and really realized where I wanted to be with my margins and what it was going, the job was going to cost to get me there. And then to be able to stand behind the product. And you also had, had uh, you know, um, insisted on the flat rate, the flat book, um, flat rate book. Right. Um, so now I have more of a presentation that I can sit down, give the customer options and, you know, talk about our guarantees. And we're also offering, uh, you know, the hundred percent satisfaction guarantee, which I feel like has been a huge selling point for us. I and mean, you people fought that like crazy. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. I don't fight that. <laughs> there was like about, I remember there was about three weeks where you and I and a couple of other guys in our group weekly group chats were having these long conversations about where we were arguing with Brian about why and he had all the reasons why a hundred percent guarantee wasn't going to work for him. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I, I, I gave in and, uh, you know, it's worked, you know, I, customers, like you say, you know, they just want a machine that's going to work, you know, right. they, they, don't, they don't want you to rip it out. Never had anybody take me up on it yet. And in fact, you know, I even made in the, in a, a real rush time, I actually installed the wrong furnace in the customer's home and I called it. And then I contacted them, let them know what happened. It was a mistake. We had like four or five, you know, systems sitting at the shop. Uh, we grabbed the long, wrong one, loaded it up. It was just, it was the same model and everything. It was just 20,000 BTUs difference. And uh, so I ended up going to the customer and, you know, after doing the load calculation and everything, he didn't even need it, but he insisted on we install it. Well, it wasn't even a week and a half later, uh, that same customer contacted me and said, Hey, I have a buddy who needs a furnace. You could probably sell it to him. So I knocked a couple hundred bucks off. That furnace was gone out of the shop within a week yep. and a half. Yep. So I was like, well, yeah, it's not I mean, bad. <laughs> those, those customers are your best reviews and stuff too, because they're the ones that you take care of them and they go, wow, they, they didn't just run their mouth about guarantees. They actually did it. Yeah. 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 We made a mistake. We owned up to it. You know, stuff yeah. happens. And you the know. good news was you didn't charge so little in the first place where you were like, man, I'm seriously losing money now. Yeah. Kind of going, you know, I made enough where once in a while I can afford to go back and just make it right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And then there's some jobs you run into stuff that, 
you just didn't expect, you know? And then, so it might lower your, your margin a little bit, but you have a good enough margin. You have yeah. that majority of your jobs that, you know, if you got to take a little less than one, you know, we haven't lost any. Right. So, so look, to get into the nitty gritty of what your numbers were, this is interesting to me, right? So here we are, what, eight months into the year, right? Mm -hmm. And in eight months, you've already generated just about the amount of money from all of last year. That's correct. Yeah. But you've also had the net profit, the money you got to keep is up by 45%. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. So, and you did less work. Mm -hmm. and my, exp <laughs> my expenses were, uh, I think, close to um, 50000 less in the way of expenses right now right. to my year end. And that's month. after you hired an office staff you didn't have before. Yep. And it's still less. Yep. Yep. So, this is what it's like when a business is running as a business instead of a dude running around a truck doing a series of side jobs. Yep. So, and now we are uh, in the process of looking for another tech. Um, so I'm actually supposed to meet with a guy this afternoon and then. Right. Uh, right. I mean, that's, 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 I mean, that's really cool. I mean, here's the really, the really interesting part. What does your family think of this? Oh, they're really proud. Yeah. You know? My, my my parents are very conservative, so you know they they weren't um, uh, they were they're blue collar, you know. Right. Uh, they, they but you get like spouses hurt. suddenly going, "Oh my God, you're not working seventy hour weeks anymore." Thank God. I mean, you know, you get, yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> she's a lot happier. In fact, she she works late later days than me now most times. <laughs> like, you're going to the gym at six o'clock, <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, no, I'm I mean, that's still a, not even home from work until seven. Well, because it circles back to why did you start a business in the first place? Why wouldn't you just stay where you were and have your job at your other company? Ah, uh, for multiple reasons: financial freedom, uh, independence, you know, free time, right. Uh, you free know, time. And then of course you end up with no free time and no financial freedom for most cases, because you end up like, Oh, I jumped on this boat and I didn't have the business skills and I'm working harder than I used to. And if I work out my hourly rate, it sucks. I'm working for like minimum wage or less sometimes. Right. Pretty much. Yeah, um, no, you know, so what happened to all this freedom I was supposed to get, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't have time freedom. I can't go to the gym at six o'clock, you know? No, no, there was, you know, many a times that I didn't make it in for weeks at a time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that, that's an important thing to me. And, I know you took a vacation me. just like in the summer, like a week or two ago. Yep. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. When yeah, was the last time you had a summer vacation in the, uh, a vacation in the summer? Uh, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, think about it, dude. You got, you got your life going pretty good now. Yeah, we're going, we're going, definitely going in a good direction. We're yeah. definitely going, I want to keep on this path of travel and, uh, right. you know, maybe I think even some more summertime off, you know, summer is my favorite time of the year. I love, I love the right. warmth, love the sun, love being, you know, being out of the beach and stuff like that. It's being outside, yeah. you know, so. Well, that's all good. I mean, you know, I hope you went someplace cool that was, that everybody likes, you know, that wasn't. You know, you didn't end up. Uh, <laughs> I had to do. I had to do the. Uh, uh, my wife's uh, sister has a beach house in uh, oh, Dewey. Okay. So it was cool. It was the first time I got to go there, and we. I got to see a live show. Aaron Lewis uh, play right. play live. So that was cool. Was, that's been on something I've been wanting to do. So he just so happened to be there that weekend. So it kind of worked out kind of nicely. Cool. So, but it was good just to get away and then be able to see her family. You know, they're, cool. they, don't, they live out yeah, of state. Yeah. So um. So what? What's the advice? I mean, you're still working on your year. I mean, you're still working. You're still pretty early on. You've been doing this for a couple months and you've made these changes in a fairly short period of time, like just basically just over two months. Mm -hmm. um, and what's your next project that you're working on for the next growth opportunity? Where are you, where are you at now? Uh, hiring and marketing. You know, like I said, I, I got to get a, I got to get somebody else in because I'm about capped out what I can do with myself, my, my part-time guy and my full-time helper. You know, right. I, you know, we're, we're pretty much stretched to the max of what we can do, you know, working six days a week. Um, so the next steps to hire on, give me a couple of days out of the field a week so I can concentrate on uh, marketing and really just growing the business and getting more structure, structure in the place. Right. Um, so as I hire on, 
we don't continue to go with my wild, wild west mentality. You know, I got everything up here. Right. I, I know how I want it run, but, you know, they're not in my head. So I, I have to put, you know, documentation down, and get, get processes together. And that way everybody's on the same page. So I think it's going to be a combination. Well, I know that like one of the early things we always work on is getting that vision for your company, what you want it to look like and actually formally writing that down. Right. You know, have you had any instances where that came back to like, Oh, I'm good. I, it's a good thing I did that. What's that? Have you had any instances where something came up where you're like, Oh, it's a good thing. I actually wrote down what we're supposed to be doing. Oh yeah. I mean, there's been a lot, like when I brought Vicky on, you know, right before I brought her on, I actually did take a little time to do some of this and like she's handling, you know, here in Maryland, we have uh, utility rebates and stuff like that. So I wrote down the processes for that, you know, and I've just dumped them in a folder and we have a file sharing uh, software we utilize and just, you know, she called me up and couldn't remember us. So we'll just go to the document. It walks you through it step by step. And then I got off the phone and back to installing or whatever I was doing at the given time. I'll give you an example. Like for me, we decided in my company, like years and years and years ago, like, Hey, we do residential. We do this. We do this. We do this. Right. Here's what we do. Here's what our company's about. Here's our value system. Here's what we're, our culture is like and everything like that. And I had, I made a mistake and I never made this mistake ever again. I had a really good, very wealthy residential customer that owned a bunch of hotels all over the state of Colorado where I live. And he owned one in Steamboat, which is a ski resort. And it's like four hours from here. Um, it was like, hey, I've got, I own the Holiday Inn in Steamboat. And we're doing a remodel. Do you want to go up and do the rooftops for me? And I went, all right. Now, I never should have done that. Right? Because while I'm out there doing these rooftops four hours from here, it took a couple of weeks because we had weather problems. And then the roofers didn't show up on time. And all the crap you have when you're doing these construction things where I have no control over it. Right? Because I end up in a, I end up doing something I shouldn't be doing, and while I'm doing that, I lost like fifty thousand dollars in business that month because I was focusing on stuff I shouldn't be focusing on. So from that day forward, after we wrote this stuff down, when someone showed up and said, "Hey, I've got a set of blueprints or whatever you want to look at this," I'd be like, "Nah, we don't do that," <laughs> you know, because it just it it allows you to this really quickly go, even if I'm tempted to not go in that direction of something I know I shouldn't do because I told myself, here's what we're about. And the thing that just popped up in front of me is not that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, for me, like new construction, just in general. Right. I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, but there's a lot of guys who get tempted. Oh, yeah. it's a little slow right now. I guess we'll take on a project. It's like, yeah, now you're in the middle of this new construction project. It takes a couple of weeks and suddenly one of your really lucrative replacement opportunities pops up and you can't do it tomorrow and get the money. Yeah. And then what you could make in, you know, four or five hours might take you, you know, a couple of days on a new construction. Yeah, a week in a new construction project. And you'll get paid for a month and a half because they've yeah. all the and stuff. You know what? It's like I could sit here and go stay home and watch daytime TV and wait for the one opportunity that's going to come in on Wednesday and just do that and be, and be just as far ahead, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, and not to say you should, but the fact is you sometimes come out ahead of that when you lose your focus. Sure. Um, and that could be the same thing if you're if for a company, which I don't really help people do, but there's guys who are really good at new construction. They get their whole organization built around that. Yeah. And suddenly a demand service call comes up and then they unfocus from that. And they try to send a couple of the new construction laborers over to figure out how to fix this unit. Dude, you're losing the focus on what you actually do. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's a problem for a lot of companies. Um, yeah. yeah. Of the I mean, credit to the ones that are good at it and then have it streamlined. I just... You know, I did it when I first got into the field, you know, my first couple of years and I don't have any intentions of returning back to it. I just want to keep it strictly to service and replacements. Yep. I, mean, I think the bottom line is figure out what you are, what you're going to be and then go be that. Yeah. Right. And then if you need help with that, get the help to get really, really, really good at that thing that you want to be. Sure. And we always, we always say, don't act like the company you are act like the company that you want to be. Yeah. You know, and that comes around back price to your, yourself accordingly too. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's our pricing dis discussion. And all these guys, well, I'm a small company, so I don't have overhead and stuff. It's like, well, if you're the company that you say you want to be next year, you're going to have the overhead a year from now. Why don't you start charging right now? Like you have it and you'll have the money to afford the stuff really soon instead of waiting till you trickle and somehow accidentally stumble into it 
five years from now, right? right? Yeah. You can, you can af suddenly afford an office staff if you just charge people correctly. Yeah. You know? And I yeah. think that was for you. I know, I know for you, the pricing was a big deal. I know the office staff was a big deal too. Yeah. You, you kind of pushed me on that one too. Right. You know, I was back and forth on that too, whether I should bring somebody on or not. And, uh, yeah, you gave me the push I needed. And I, you know, I think that that's a lot of what I needed. You know, I kind of, in some senses, know what I should be doing, but sometimes just that extra little push, you know, and, and, and reiterating and, and reiterating as to why from somebody that's been there and done that, you know, helps you, helps you get over it. Well, it's yeah. like the human nature of a service tech is we think the most important part of our business is just fixing stuff. Yeah. Right. So we think if we want to grow, all we need is more trucks and more techs and our business will grow. Right. Well, that's the, that's the kind of lizard brain again that does that. But when you get back and start thinking about it, it's like, dude, you're not any good at this office stuff. Now, if you want to be an owner, you're not allowed to ignore it. You do have to learn how to do it. But dang it, you don't have to be doing this all day long. Why don't you get somebody who actually likes it? Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, and then you can go back to doing what you really like, which is training some technicians or something. Right. And bottom line, get that crap off your plate. It's a 15 or $20 an hour job at most. And you can go make a thousand dollars an hour. Why in the hell are you doing $20 an hour work? Yeah. hundred percent. And I tell you what, it, it's been beautiful not having to deal with a lot of this crap. Right. You know, it, it and when really you get to the gym at six o'clock, isn't it nice knowing, Hey, the invoices for the day and everything are already put into the system because somebody else did it. Yeah. yeah you do every, have to take every, a minute to look. Done for the day. And then, you know, right. and when I come home from the gym, you know, then that's when, you know, I'll spend some time doing, you know, video, your videos or, right. you know, you know, jumping on, you know, some of the social media platforms and talking to other guys. And, you know, I still don't stop at the end of the day, you know, Right, right. Yeah, but you, 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 so you still have to look. You still have to like look at the numbers for like, okay, the invoices got put in. I have to take five minutes to look, but I don't have to spend two hours doing it. Right. You know. Yeah, and for me, it's just you know uh, educating myself further too. You know, reaching out to other people, okay. talking to other guys that have been there and done that, networking. You know, too. So I always spend a little time. You know, conversations with you in the evenings. You yeah. know. So. Yeah, we do that off in the evening because I know that most of the guys that I'm working with are out in a truck or they're, they're busy all day. They're, they're running a business. Yeah. So it's pretty common to have evening conversations or Saturdays or some, something weird. Um, so before we wrap up, because I don't want to go too long for, for folks, what would you say to guys as like the best piece of advice that you learned or what you're working on next? Like, you know, where, like the best, the most best personal growth thing you got, like I was here, now I'm there. So guys, if you're like me, what do you think they should do? I mean, I think, I think you should take, take a chance. You know, if, if you feel good about it, you know, and, and I did then take the chance. And then, you know, if, if I could go back, I would have hired a coach earlier. <laughs> okay. I, I would have definitely. Me too, by the way. <laughs> What's that? Me too, by the uh, way. <laughs> yeah, yeah and I, I would have, I would have done that a year ago, and then my numbers probably would be even more so different than they are now, and my company would be different than it is now. Right. But that's okay, you know. I'm just going to keep moving forward and keep working with Ted. And we always start where we are. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's always like we always hear about these things of who has a bigger advantage of where you live or the upbringing you had or whatever status you have or skills you don't, you're missing or whatever. It's like, dude, you can start wherever you are and make progress. It's, yeah. and, and I think, I think one of the biggest things we have, we rarely talk about outside of our group, right? I mean, inside of our group, we talk about it a lot, but outside of our group, we rarely talk about it. But the biggest piece that I see for a lot of you guys, which really makes me happy to watch is the mindset shifting that happens Yeah. to watch somebody who you, who was a service tech struggling to run a business and actually that we can talk about the tactical things you do, like get your pricing right. And we do this and we buy a truck and we get a, whatever the things we do, right? The physical ac actions you take. But the most interesting thing for me to watch from the outside looking in is watch somebody go, you realize you don't think about the world like you did a while ago. Yeah. Your perception of how the business works and everything is shifted. You know, things like, oh, I guess X price isn't 
a high price. I've changed my mind. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, oh, I guess hundred percent guarantee isn't going to hurt me. I've changed my mind. Right. Yeah. In fact, the other guy who's over here arguing that, that it'll never work. I'm looking at him like, are you crazy? <laughs> like, you know, yeah. it's fun to watch the transformational mind shift that happens. Sure. Yeah. I got a good buddy of mine. That's uh, got a small part-time business and he started it probably a year before I, eh, close to a year before I started mine. And I've been pushing him, pushing him to go full time with his. And, uh, you know, now it's, it's just interesting, like how I see how my mind is relative to how his mind is. And he's doing very well for himself in business. Um, but it's just, we have, we kind of carry a different mentality to a degree and, yep. you know, how we view things. And, you know, you know, when I ask about some things like that are business oriented, um, you know, it's just, it's not on the forefront of his mind. He's, you know, but he's doing, you know, well for himself. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, somebody it, asked me a little bit ago, what somebody asked me um, that I met, you know, like you always ask, oh, what do you do for a living? Right? You know, that kind of question. And the answer I had to give, which I thought was, I was trying to be funny at the time, which I realized was amusing, but at the same time true, is I take blue collar dudes and turn them into businessmen. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's what it is, right? It's like the way we think about, like I get up, I make X dollars an hour, I got this job at this company and I'm going to do this. And then at some point you have to transform from where that brain of your 20 years of working in the field were we have to transform you into you're a business guy that happens to a lot about air conditioners. Right. You know, because yeah. I know that was my transformation over my career. If I go back 25 years, I was definitely a service tech running around thinking, all I got to do is fix these things and people pay me and that's good. Yeah. You know? And yeah. if I want to own a business, I just do that, but I just do it more. Yeah. It's like, well, no, not exactly. Uh, <laughs> you know? no, it's definitely different than, um, Right. Than I thought it was going to be. And I'm not really sure what I thought, but it, right. it's definitely different. But right. now it's really neat. And the growth I've had myself, um, it, it's just, it's been amazing the last the last two years since I've been doing this. So yeah. and like, you know, I, I love it. it. It's long days. It's hard work. There's no doubt about that. But Oh, it's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's simple. Once you get your, once you say, okay, here's my numbers and they're really there, where it gets where it gets really harder than it needs to be. Here's the really weird part. I look at guys and I'm like, you guys, some of you are making things way harder than you need to make this. You're complicating the living hell out of this. You know? <laughs> like, Oh my God, you're going to complain about your overheads different than somebody else. I have to tell you, I have never seen a business that had a different overhead other than the fact that they won't admit it. Right. You know, like, well, I don't have an office staff. I know, but you want one. <laughs> so right. you kind of have one. You're just not freaking paying for it yet. And you'll never get one until you decide to do that. Right. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know, you until you decide to charge enough to pay for that and go get one, you'll never have one. So why are we having this conversation for, you want to have this conversation for two days or two years? Which one is it? Right. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. um, and the funny part is it doesn't take, a crap load of time to get this fixed. It's not it. Once someone makes up their mind that they're sick and tired of being sick and tired and they want to change it. It happens like that. It's just super quick. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. Oh, all I have to do is hire an office person. What are they supposed to do? Get them in there and do the thing you hate the most and have them do that at first. Yeah. You know, the way I always tell folks on, as far as the office, we're talking about that. It's like, why don't you just have them answer your dang phone for you so you never answer your cell phone in the middle of a job ever again? That's been beautiful too, by the way. <laughs> the customers like it better. Everybody likes it better. Yeah. You're more productive. Just start with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's been a huge blessing. It's really nice to, to not have my hands full of tools and trying to reach for my cell phone and break away from my mental shift and everything Right. to, to try to answer the phone and try to pull up my schedule. And it just doesn't look. And you're trying to serve two customers at the same time here. I'm still yeah. fixing this thing. This customer needs this. And I got this other phone call. I'm trying to make sure that they get what they need yeah. and, and nobody's getting everything a hundred percent as good as it could be. No. Hey, yeah. I can't tell you how many calls I missed, which is business opportunities. <laughs> because I'm standing there talking to a customer and I can't just say, Oh, hold on a second. I got to schedule right. this person real quick. I'll be right back. You know, that's right. not, 
Exactly. It's, well, and the thing is you can, be losing, you can be losing work from the customer you're standing face to face with. And you can also be losing the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're, while they, while you didn't answer, it went to voicemail. They just called five other companies and got someone to come to talk to them right away. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even when Vicky started, I mean, and she, we're still on a learning curve here. Um, you know, there's a lot of times she has to, you know, reach back out to me or shoot me a text, you know, on, on question of the schedule. Um, we're still working on that and getting that streamlined better. Right. Um, but at it's least better. somebody's answering the phone mm -hmm. and they, they've talked to somebody, they got a person on the phone, she's friendly. And then they're confident that, we're going to get right back to them within a couple of minutes. Just letting them know you have a problem. We're here to solve it. We're on top of it. We're good. And they're yeah. like, cool. I don't need to call four other companies. Yeah. I got a company here that's helping me already. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it makes you look like just like a more professional company when somebody is answering the phone, you know, you back around to act like the company you want to be. Now yeah. you are. Right? Yeah. You know? yeah. So and, yeah, and I don't think part is, what, is, what does she really cost you in the end? Like less than the install of one air conditioner a month. What's that? If you install one air conditioner a month, you can absolutely afford her. Yeah. 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 It's not a big deal, right? Yeah. No, nah. it's, it, 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 it's small right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, just sell one extra air conditioner. It's not that big a deal. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. so, so anyway, Hey, thanks Brian for chatting with us. Um, you know, you know, and so, hey, guys, if you want to have the conversation that Brian and I had when he started, um, I do them for free. Um, obviously, he and I had a couple of them. And basically, <laughs> <laughs> basically, I do those because, look, I want to find out, like we said, you got to drink somebody's Kool-Aid. Let's, if you need to find out if it's a good fit and if you think we can help, then let's have that talk. It's not that hard to do. Um, you just go to tedgravelin.com. It's right on my website. You can click a link. It says book a call or tedgravelin.com forward slash booking will take you right to the page. All it asks you to do is pick up the time you want to have. So you set your own appointment. You pick from the ones I have available. I have them, you know, several days a week. You can just pick the day you want, pick the time you want, and then we'll have a chat. Basically what we do on that call, and Brian can tell you this is true. We talk about where you're at. What are your problems? What are the challenges you're having? And then we build a plan on that call for how to fix it from here to there. And if I can help you, then I offer to help you. If that's not a good fit, then I just say, you know what? You might need to be talking to somebody else over here. That happens too. Um, it's not always a good fit. And I'm never going to push somebody that I know I can't help. Every single person I work with is somebody I know that, I'm seeing the vision. I know I can take this business from here to here as long as that person does what they're supposed to do. And on that call, we're talking about whether or not that's going to happen or not. But most importantly, if you just need some questions answered, feel free to reach out and we'll get some help for you. Um, and anything else you want to add, Brian, before we go? It's been a great experience. You know, again, I was, I was on the fence, but I, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm happy I decided to, uh, to work with you, Ted. You know, you've been a great asset and help to uh, not only me, but my business. And, uh, you know, I appreciate it. I appreciate Wife's it. happy, you know. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> never, I've never met her, but it sounds like you guys are, you know, had a little better in, as far as like time with each other because the business isn't sucking up every five seconds. Yeah, yeah. And then once in a while we get Saturdays together. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a big thing for a lot of folks. It's like they never get a Saturday together or they never get, you know. Um, yeah. And she would tell you, she had been trying to get me to go to that beach house that we went to for the last three years. And, uh, so she would tell you that was a big win for us this year. <laughs> Finally, you got no excuses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, so. no, here's a good question. Are you happy you went to the beach house? But yeah, and that was a good time. It's it good seeing her family and, uh, you know, getting just having a little mindless time on the beach. So here's a good one. What's your goal that you're reaching for next time? Are you, is there someplace she wants to go that you want to take her? Like, yeah, we always wanted to go wherever. Like, um, uh, for us, our, our next vacation is going to be, uh, a relaxation vacation somewhere on the beach, somewhere, you she know, go to Hawaii or something or something like that. Yeah. Somewhere really nice. Uh, the last couple of vacations, even going to the beach, her, her, her mom has a uh, guardianship over a, a young child, uh, parents or right. problems. So, um, you know, it's, 
when you have a four year old running around, it's not always. I know. I have one. I'm five year old. Yeah, yeah. So you know. Okay. So you know, and she's a little sweetheart. But um, well, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, the way your business is going now, you're gonna have the ability to just go ahead and book that. Just go ahead and book it and go someplace cool. Yeah, we were planning on going in November for our anniversary somewhere. Well, there you go. Yeah. That pulled the trigger on, on what's and, and guys, guys, for those of you that are thinking about this, this is the kind of crap that you started a business for in the first place is to be able to say, you know what? I've got some guys, they can handle stuff. If the phone rings, my phone person can answer it. I got this other guy who can run a call and stuff. I don't, they don't need me every five seconds. I can yeah. go away for a week yeah. and I'll come back and my business has made money while I was gone. And I'm good, right? Yeah. And nothing fell apart, and I'll go to and I'll go to hell, right? And not only that, but there's a certain amount of it not being dangerous. When you were a one man company, it's pretty dangerous because if you get hurt or something like that, you lose it. You lose oh, it. I thought about that often. Yep, fall I off the ladder, lose the whole business. Yeah, right. You could lose a lot more than that. But you know, but I mean, just just if you're just laid up for a month, you're like, well, okay. I, my phone doesn't ring anymore because every time customers called me, I couldn't do it. So they started calling somebody else. I lost all my word of mouth. I lost everything. Yeah. Right? And that happens to more businesses that I run into a lot. And it's, it's okay to be small, but damn it, guys, you've got to get big enough so that it can survive a while without you. Yeah. You know, I don't agree. the litmus test for that is try not doing anything for three or four days and see what happens. You know, no, like, I didn't answer my phone. I didn't install anything. I didn't run a call. I didn't do anything. Like just if you got yeah. the flu for four days in the middle of your busy season, what's going to happen? Oh. Well, if you're running a business like we're talking about, at this point, Brian's got a phone person, an installer, a helper. He's got all these guys that can do stuff, right? Yeah. Now that's the point. That's the point. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll call that a good thing for today. And uh, thanks, Brian, for hanging out with everybody. And um, we'll talk soon. Sounds good, Ted. Thanks, man. Have a great weekend. All right. Right.